Candida auris is a fungus that can cause severe illness, and it spreads easily among patients in healthcare facilities. Environmental cleaning staff have a key role in preventing the spread of Candida auris. Candida auris can survive on surfaces for weeks. It has been found on multiple locations in a patient room, on high-touch surfaces like bedside tables and bed rails, and on surfaces farther away from the patient, like windowsills. Not only has Candida auris been found on surfaces inside of a patient room, but it has also been found on mobile or reusable equipment that is shared between patients, like glucometers, temperature probes, blood pressure cuffs, ultrasound machines, nursing carts, isolation carts, and crash carts. Ideally, each person colonized or infected with Candida auris should have their own equipment that isn't shared with others. A patient with Candida auris can spread the germs to the surrounding environment and shared patient care equipment. Then, germs can be transferred to another patient, either by using equipment that has not been properly cleaned and disinfected, or by the hands of a healthcare worker who has not removed their gloves or has not properly cleaned their hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. The spread of Candida auris can be prevented by environmental cleaning, disinfection, glove removal, use of alcohol-based hand rub, and washing hands. Not all disinfectants are able to kill Candida auris, so it's important to make sure that the disinfectant used is on EPA's List P, antimicrobial products registered with EPA for claims against Candida auris. If products on List P are not available at your facility, disinfectants that are effective at killing Clostridioides difficile can be used in the interim. And, as soon as you get the appropriate disinfectants, immediately use them instead. It's important to note that quaternary ammonium products, or quats, do not kill Candida auris. Cleaning and disinfecting the room or care area of a patient with Candida auris should happen after non-isolation rooms are cleaned. This will help make sure the germs don't spread to other patients. Before entering the room, use an alcohol-based hand rub or wash your hands. Then, put on a clean gown and gloves. Leave the cleaning cart right outside the door. Once you begin cleaning and disinfecting an isolation room, do not leave that room until you are done or unless requested by a healthcare provider. When you are done cleaning and disinfecting the patient care area, remove your gown and gloves properly upon exit to avoid germs spreading outside of the room. Do not touch the outside of your gown as Candida auris may have settled there. Use an alcohol-based hand rub or wash your hands. Then, put on new gloves and clean and disinfect any environmental cleaning equipment that was used in the room, including wiping down the mop handle and removing the mop head, before returning to the equipment cart and moving on to the next task. The terms cleaning and disinfecting are often used together, but they are two different and important actions. Cleaning removes visible dirt, dust, spills, smears, grime, and bodily fluids like blood, as well as some germs, from surfaces. It's important that you clean before disinfecting, because dirt and grime can make disinfectants not work as well. Disinfectants are what kill the germs on surfaces and objects. While you can usually judge if something is clean or not just by looking at it, this doesn't work with disinfection. Germs are too small for us to see, so we can't see if something has been disinfected or not. That's why it's important to follow the manufacturer's instructions to make sure you are using the disinfectant correctly. Is it EPA approved? What personal protective equipment needs to be worn? Which surfaces can the disinfectant be used on? What germs is the disinfectant proven to kill? Does the disinfectant need to be diluted? How long does the disinfectant need to remain wet on the surface to kill the germs? This is the disinfectant's contact time, which is also called dwell time or wet time. It's important that the disinfectant remain wet on the surface for the full contact time without being wiped away or disturbed to make sure that it works.
If the disinfectant solution needs to be diluted, first check the expiration date on the stock disinfectant bottle. Containers used to store the prepared diluted solution should be clean, clearly labeled, and marked with an expiration date based on the manufacturer's instructions for use. New solution should not be added to old solution because this can lead to contamination or reduced efficacy. While some disinfectants need preparation, others may be ready to use without mixing. So it's important to always follow the instructions from the manufacturer, regardless of which disinfectant is used. Daily cleaning and disinfection occur while the patient is admitted and should focus on high-touch surfaces, floors, and hand-washing sinks. As the name implies, daily cleaning and disinfection occurs at least once during each 24-hour period to remove organic material and reduce microbial contamination. If a patient with candida auris needs to be seen outside of their room, like for physical therapy or a test, it's important to ensure that those areas are thoroughly cleaned and disinfected as well. Healthcare providers should schedule appointments for high-contact medical or restorative care for candida auris patients, as well as those with other multidrug-resistant organisms, ideally toward the end of the day or around a break in the schedule. This allows enough time to thoroughly clean and disinfect the environment after their appointments. This doesn't apply to social activities. Terminal cleaning and disinfection occurs after a patient is discharged or transferred to another room. In the patient room, prioritize cleaning high-touch surfaces outside the patient zone. Start by cleaning shared equipment and common surfaces. Then, move to surfaces and items that were touched during patient care but are still outside the patient zone. Last, clean the surfaces and items within the patient zone that were touched directly by the patient. The goal is to eliminate microbial contamination and ensure that no germs are transferred to the next patient. When cleaning and disinfecting a candida auris patient's room, work in such a manner as to avoid missing areas that need to be cleaned and to avoid cross-contamination. Leave cleaning carts outside of the patient room, as they have been associated with the spread of germs. Work from clean to dirtier areas of the room to avoid spreading dirt and germs. For example, clean and disinfect bed rails before patient toilets. Clean from high to low to prevent dirt and germs from dripping or falling and contaminating already cleaned areas. For example, clean and disinfect the bed rails before bed legs. Use fresh cleaning cloths and mop heads for each patient room and never double dip cleaning cloths into the portable containers used for storing cleaning products. Use disinfectants at the proper dilution and for the appropriate contact time. For the rooms of patients on transmission-based precautions for candida auris, put on a new gown and gloves to clean and disinfect each room and remove your gown and gloves upon exit once you are finished cleaning the room. And lastly, always use an alcohol-based hand rub or wash your hands after removing gloves. All shared and reusable equipment, like scales, ventilators, and physical therapy equipment, should be cleaned and disinfected after each use. Facilities should have a way to indicate which equipment is cleaned and disinfected and store it away from dirty equipment. Public health investigation during outbreaks has found that healthcare personnel are often unclear about who is responsible for cleaning and disinfecting mobile or reusable equipment and how it should be done. Healthcare personnel should be trained on both which equipment they are responsible for cleaning and disinfecting and how to clean it properly. Because equipment moves from room to room and often several times per day, like vital signs monitors and glucometers, Mobile or reusable equipment can be a significant source of candida auris spread. To confirm that cleaning and disinfection are done effectively, facility leadership or a designee should directly observe the cleaning and disinfecting practices of EVS staff. Details should be included as a part of the facility's infection prevention and control plan. These monitoring programs ensure that environmental cleaning follows best practices and if deficiencies are observed, 
they can be addressed promptly. Here are some key points to remember. Candida auris can survive on surfaces for weeks. Understand the importance of environmental cleaning, disinfection, and the appropriate use of an EPA-registered disinfectant, list P. When cleaning a room occupied by a patient or resident colonized with Candida auris, avoid cross-contamination and work in a deliberate manner from clean to dirty and high to low. Conduct hand hygiene at key moments, including before and after the use of gloves. Thank you for listening today. This video is part of a 10-part video series on Candida Auris. To access additional videos, please visit the Candida Auris video webpage at health.pa.gov slash video. For questions about Candida Auris, please contact your local health department or call 1-877-PA-HEALTH.